Welcome. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Ah, okay. So I've got one of these knives. I've been meaning to get one of these for a little while. It's like an X-Acto knife kind of thing, you know, precision blades. But this is like a um, BGA repair blade set. I'll show you on a bench as well. It's got a lot of different like serrated blades and hook blades and stuff like that, so you can use it for cleaning things up. I thought I'd get myself one because I've spent times I wish I had a better, more precise knife. And in here, Ah, oh, scalpels. So some blades in, in these packets here, obviously well protected, you don't cut yourself. And a couple of handles. So the idea, I think, is that you, you lock the blade into the handle there. But again, I'll show you on the bench for you. You can't see anything right now. The only problem doing this kind of setup is that although you can see me and see the, my bench and, and the test gear and a bit more interesting to look at, you can't see the item so well. So I have to do like two shots, I'll do the shot of the bench. And then obviously on the bench close-ups, if there's anything that's worth having a closer look at. Okay, so now we've got these scalpels and things that I've looked at. So let's look at this one first. So these are the two handles. You notice this one's already got a bit of a bend in it. But you can probably see a little, like a slot just in there. And again on that side, so I believe the blade's supposed to slide onto them. One's thicker than the other, I'm not quite sure what the story is there. So let's have a look. And get one of these out. We get out of the sharp end, shall we? Oh, it's fairly sharp. It's not super sharp. It's not as sharp as I thought it would be. So I think it's supposed to kind of slot over there like that. There you go, on. Do I need to cut something? What do you reckon? Try some bubble wrap. Yeah, it's sharp enough. I didn't push that hard. So it could be good for, you know, cleaning up a circuit ball and that sort of stuff. There might be different blades in here. You can see there, it's actually a different shape. So there are different blades which are in these packs. And to get this back off again, it's a bit tight. Do you want to bend it and push it off at the same time? There we go. I mean, that's all right. Oh, look at that, go straight through. That's cool. Not. So there's also two different sizes, which is interesting too. I wonder why. Now this one here is for BGA stuff. Well, in theory. Really get into it. I only had a scalpel. Right. So we've got a collet aluminium construction. It's got one each end. It's a bit dangerous, isn't it? If you've got one each end, couldn't you like stab yourself with it? Oh, anyway. um, isn't that in a micro SD card case? So there's the different blades it comes with. There's loads of them. Then hook blades. Right, there's a set there. Really fine. These are like stainless or something, I think. The hooks there and a the wafer, and so you're getting underneath the chips. And a flat one there. Always different shapes. So, handy little toolkit, I think. These ones are interesting because they've got little cutouts in them. You can see that. This one's actually serrated. So these ones here obviously for getting underneath chips and hooking out like underfill and stuff like that. That will be handy. There's been times that I wish I had something like that, and now I do. Some chips. Not very well packaged chips, so just in a bag. Soon for less 4 n those are some parts I thought I needed for the Marconi 2435 Fruits Accounter, which I repaired. I think it's for that. Again, we'll have a close look at that. More chips. CA3046. Now, these are hard to get, I remember rightly. I think they're made anymore. These have all got different markings on them, different manufacturers. I think these are all salvaged parts. Pretty sure I don't mind the salvage parts as long as they work. I can always these are, I think are transistor arrays. Yes, yeah, CA3046 is a transistor array. 
and I've come across these parts before on other bits of gear. This is again for the Marconi 2435 Fugs Scanner. I thought I might need them, so I got some. And uh, anyway, we'll look at these in a bench too. So, these chips. I said, who's in the bag? Hmm. These were you know, 74 LS 04N, I think, wasn't it? I may or may not ever use them, I don't know. But I've got these thinking I might need them for the Marconi. And it turned out it wasn't that. Here, the next set I've got here, so these, these are the CA3046 um, devices. Actually, don't I have a... Um, I've got a tester somewhere. Where did I put that? For checking chips. It tells you what the chip is. I should go and find that, see if I can tell what these are. Just to verify them. Here we go. I found it. So we'll drop one of these chips in. We'll actually see what these things... What he thinks of them in case these are fakes or whatever, or if it can identify them, let's give it a go. So, this is the 74S 04N. Um, how do you use it? 74LS 14 4069 I think that is right. Unbuffered hex inverter. I think that's actually what those are, so I think that's okay. Alright, let's try one of these. Although they're all different types. Try that one. Not found. Hmm, okay. Try another one. But these are transistor arrays, so I can actually test them with the multimeter. Try again. Not found. Okay, so I can't actually check them like that. I don't remember what a pinout is for those though. I might have to go and look it up. Pretty sure it's like three in a row though. So let's just have a look. Diode check. Here we go. Let's see if we can do this. There's a junction there. Junction there, there we go. So yeah, they do appear to be correct. So when I actually go to test one, I'll, I'll check the pin out properly and see if they actually work okay, but yeah, that had junctions in it anyway. I don't know. It may or may not be any good, but I'll have to test them all individually. But it's basically a transistor array. That's what it's basically in there. There's like four of them in here or something like that. So these are a bunch of supposedly 18650 battery holders. No, oh, they look a bit big though. Let's just check one. Where are they? Because I have them right here, it's convenient. No, no, they're right. These are actually allowed for protected cells too. This design would allow for protected cells, they're not too tight. I'll go and look at it on the bench as well. I don't want to bothering to do this if I have to do everything over there as well. So the next thing is all these battery holders. Now I've got a few different ones here. I've got some four cell battery holders. So I've got three of those. I've got some three cell holders. And I've got some individual holders. Right, so I've got two three cells and three individuals. So let's have a look at these. This I think is basically the same as the ones I had before when I was doing that project on the Fluke 540B. This like the same holder it was on those modules which I had which has got the charge controller built into them. Uh, so um, let's get it back. So that will pop in there quite nicely. There's a bit of play in there. So maybe if you've got a protected cell it might still be okay. It might still fit. It's not too tight so that's, that seems fine. Uh, wire quality, yeah, I don't know if I can take an amp or so though. No, I probably could. It's not too bad. They're just soldered onto these tabs anyway. So if you wanted to change those wires, you probably could. 
this little three cell one. This looks quite chunky considering what it is, right? But um, so let's just chuck one in the middle. So because it's got a spring, I actually prefer that. And it's got a nice center contact, which is proud as well. See that? So if you've got a, a flat-ended cell like this one, it can actually make contact with that dimple quite nicely to make a good connection. And the springs are very forgiving. So if you do have a protected cell, you can fit it in there. So you put it down, you've got a gap. So you can actually use this with protected cells just fine. I don't have any protected cells to try it on, unfortunately, but I know they are slightly longer. So that's cool. And it's got a four cell version. And this is very much like the single cell with the metal straps on the ends here with the individual wires. These are individually wired, these ones. By having four individual holders. Right, whereas this one is a series pack. Right, so they're all in series together. Whereas this one you could wire them up in parallel or series or whatever you want to do. Or, you know, or combinations thereof. You could have a couple in parallel, a couple in series. Which is why I got this one because it's very versatile. You're not tied to what the battery pack configuration comes from. You know, So cool. Nice enough. And I should check the fit too, shouldn't I? Just to be sure. Yeah, it's the same as the other one. So I don't know if it can get um, protected cells in there or not. I don't know. Maybe it might be a bit of a squash. Might put a little stress on these contacts. I, I prefer not to put protected cells in those, but I think this one should be fine. All right. This is another de-stuffing tool. De-stuffing tool. Now, the one I showed in the previous mailbag was a flat tool for like removing knobs and stuff like that. This is a tool for removing nuts. It's got some prongs on it and different kinds of stud patterns, so you can get onto various kind of nuts on on, pot, on pots or switches or whatever. It may come in handy. I thought I'd get one when I saw it. I thought, oh, it's not too expensive. I'll just grab one. Again, I'll show you something to mention that. Okay, this thing. Now, this is like a little spanner, as I was saying before. And if I can get the thing to focus, you can see that it's got those little fingers on the end there. Alright, so that's got four on that one. This one only has two. That one here has four as well. And that one here only has two. Alright, so, so we're getting onto um, nuts which have just got slots inside them in, instead of uh, hexagonal kind of fitments. I can't think of anything I've got around here right now, which is a great example of that. But it's used on like handheld radios and stuff like that. I was actually hoping for a larger size because it's exactly like this. This kind of thing, exactly like that, but bigger, is what's needed for removing or tightening microphone sockets on radios. Exactly the same kind of thing, but a different size. One more. Last one for today. No, oh, mind you, it depends how I did a video. It might be the first one you see. Hold on. Mate. Books. Oh man, I got, I got carried away with this. Now I just need to find a time to read them. Um, now, as a YouTuber, I like to try and improve what I'm doing all the time, educate myself and you know, make, see what mistakes I'm making and, and fix those mistakes. And part of that is obviously reading and, and watching videos and stuff like that of, of people which have experience or knowledge better my, than myself. And I've been watching some channels recently and well as, as always I'm watching channels and I had a few book recommendations and then a few more book recommendations <laughs> and so I bought a bunch of books and so we've got some of these may be complete rubbish some of them may be great I don't know until I read them uh, my knowledge of YouTube is already fairly good I think from what I've my education I've been putting through myself for anyway trying to teach learn about it so you've got True Ritual Volume 1 apparently so that's the first book Jumpstart your journey to 5,000 YouTube subscribers. Well, as of this morning, 
it was yesterday morning. Um, I had 6,000. I've, I've broken 6,000 now. And my subscriber counter says, oh, new subs, I think. Uh, 6,026 is what it is right now. Next book is Extreme Ownership, which is about taking charge of your life, pretty much. Apparently. Um, it wasn't that expensive, it was like 20 bucks, something like that. Yeah, okay, I'll get that. It's about um, taking resp responsibility for things. I'm already fairly responsible anyway, so it's not really, I don't think it's going to much of a stretch, but we'll see. It may help. And this one's called Primal Branding. This one's been recommended a lot. I'm not advertising these books, I'm just, this, is, this is what I purchased. Um, apparently this is good for making sure you're in well, control of your brand, really. Uh, contagious, why things catch on. So this is making things catchy. I'm trying to get people to, uh, well, in my case, watch more videos. Right? Trying to catch people on and make them more interested and make them so they keep coming back, which is hopefully you. And then we have YouTube Secrets. So um, this is probably, you know, it's probably out of date now, things move in technology. Uh, what year was this made anyway? 2018 is last year, so it can't be too far out of date. Again, that's just about tricks to help you get your channel further ahead. So I'll be reading all of these as I get time. So, to the bench. So again, links will be down below for all this stuff and make sure you go and check them if you're interested in any of these things. If you want to go and buy something or even have a look around. Um, some are from Main Goods, some are from AliExpress. Um, there's also gear best links down there too. I also have Amazon um, store as well for any tools and bits and pieces like that too. I have Amazon store for that. I think these are on there. Um, and also have merchandise if you're interested in looking at one of my designs. Although I think I've only got a couple of designs up there right now. I will be adding more at some point. So thanks for watching.